So in this lecture, we're going to analyze the stereochemistry of our SN1 reaction. So recall that an SN1 reaction is composed of two main steps. So let's begin by analyzing our first step, the ionization step. So in this step, we begin with our reactant that contains our leaving group. And this leaving group detaches, ionizes by itself, forming the following two intermediates. So we have the two products, our carbocation, which has a positive charge on the carbon, and our leaving group, which usually has a negative charge. And these two negatively charged products or intermediates are stabilized by our protopolar solvent, which is usually water. So let's examine our orbital diagram for the reactants and products. So let's observe this substrate. Now in this substrate, all our bonds, we have four bonds attached to carbon, and carbon is sp3 hybridized. And that means all these bonds are also sp3 hybridized. Now notice what happens when our leaving group begins to leave. As it begins to leave, it takes away these electrons. So it takes both of those electrons. And as it takes the electrons away, this blue section, this blue lobe, begins to enlarge and this green lobe begins to get smaller. And when we form our products, we have the following two intermediates. This is no longer sp3 hybridized. All these bonds are sp2 hybridized and the carbon is sp2 hybridized. And now, because our blue lobe began enlarging, when the two pairs of electrons, or when the pair of electrons left, this became a 2p orbital. So we went from an sp3 hybridized to a positively charged empty 2p orbital. So this molecule is completely planar. That means if we take this molecule and place it on the xy axis, all these bonds will be on the same plane. All these groups, the R groups, will be on the same plane. And that means that the bond angle between any of these atoms, between, for example, the RCR angle, is 120 degrees. So we have 120, 120 in the back, and 120 in the front. So once again, in the first step, the leaving group detaches, breaking the sp3 hybridized orbital, and that takes the electron pair. So the leaving group takes our electron pair from the orbital. This forms the positively charged carbocation intermediate, which is now sp2 hybridized and contains an empty 2p orbital. So since it contains an empty 2p orbital, if a nuclear file comes around, it can attach itself to that 2p orbital, as we'll see in just a second. So, once again, notice the carbocation is a planar molecule and forms RCR bond angles of 120 degrees, where before our angle between any RCR uh, was approximately 109 degrees. Okay, so now let's go, uh, let's go to step two. In step two, we have our nucleophile, which is usually water, but can be some other nucleophile, which uses its pair of electrons to attack the 2p orbital. Remember, we define our nucleophile as a molecule that competes for the 2p orbital. So, notice in this case, when the leaving group completely detached, our nucleophile has two ways that it can go. It can either attack from the top, attacking the green lobe, the top lobe, or it can attack the bottom lobe, the blue lobe. So when step one, or when pathway one occurs, we get the following A compound. So when nucleophile attaches from the top, all these R groups bend downward, forming the following molecule, and when the nucleophile uses its, uh, its pair of electrons to attack from the bottom, our R groups bend upward, and we form the following product, product B. So what's the relationship between product A and product B? Well, they are actually stereoisomers. They are not identical, which means they're stereoisomers, and in fact, they're enantiomers. These guys are mere images of one another. So, our 2p orbital on the open carbocation contains two lobes. 
Thus, our nuclear file, which contains a lone pair of electrons, can approach in two different ways, from top and from bottom. And this produces a racemic mixture. Now, my question is, what type of racemic mixture does or is produced? Is it 50% of one enantiomer and 50% of another enantiomer or some other ratio of enantiomers? So let's examine by looking at the following two cases. Let's suppose in case one, our leaving group completely dissociated from the substrate, forming our symmetrical carbocation. So let's suppose all these R groups are identical and our leaving group completely detached. It left and it's nowhere close to our carbocation intermediate. So now our nucleophile has a choice. It can either use the pair of electrons and attack from the top or from the bottom. Now since this substrate is completely, uh, is completely symmetrical, that means this pair of electrons will have no choice. It will be just as likely to go from the top as it will from the bottom. And that means we'll produce 50% R enantiomer and 50% S enantiomer. So if A is S and B is R, we'll have 50% of A and 50% of B. How about in case two? Let's suppose the leaving group has not yet dissociated as the nucleophile begins to approach. So here we have our lobe and let's suppose our nucleophile began to detach but haven't yet completed our detachment. It's still relatively close to our lobe. Now, where will our nucleophile attack? Where is it more likely to attack? From the top or from the bottom? Well, notice now, if it attacks from the top, this leaving group contains electrons orbiting that atom. And so there will be electron density. And as these electrons approach these electrons, there will be electrostatic repulsion. And so our nucleophile will be less likely to attack from the top, from the section where our leaving group is leaving from, there from the bottom. It will be more likely to attack from the less sterically hindered location. So now one enantiomer will predominate over the other one. So for example, if the bottom one creates an R enantiomer, the R enantiomer will predominate. There will be more of the R enantiomer than of the L enantiomer. And actually, most of the time, our reaction takes place in the following fashion. Because the nucleophile actually begins approaching our lobe before the leaving group has left. So once again, to summarize, an SN1 reaction takes place in two steps. The first step is our slow step. It's called the ionization step. It's the rate determining step. The second step is the fast step. It's the structure determining step. Now, in the second step, our nucleophile has two choices. It can go either from the top or from the bottom. If it attacks when the leaving group has completely left, has completely dissociated, there will be a racemic mixture produced. 50% of one and 50% of the other. That means if we shine plain polarized light onto our racemic mixture, it will not rotate that light. But if we get the following result, it will rotate light slightly to one direction.